Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, we got Power Tech here. Check that out. Check out that design. It's like a football almost. Stay tuned. Hey guys, do you need help organizing your tennis life? Well, think go. We got the Axiom line here, the nine pack duffel, my favorite bag, the nine pack Axiom 2.0. They even make a 12 pack if you're going on tour. And my favorite backpack of all time. I love that bag. So if you wanna organize your tennis life, think go. All right, so coffee sponsor of today is Kyle B. Kyle B writes, you the bomb. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Thank you for all of the tennis string knowledge. I feel so much better equipped to go into my shop and talk about what I'm looking for. Oh, thank you, Kyle. I'm glad I'm able to help and assist in, uh, you know, there's a lot of strings out there. I feel like there's way too many, but i um, glad I'm able to cut through the clutter and, you know, hopefully help you find what you want and need for, you know, your tennis racket and your gameplay. All right. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. You want to just hook up the channel. Super thanks is the way. Link is below. Thank you so, so much, guys. All right. Dark, dark roast. Piping, piping hot. All right, guys. Have you ever seen something like this before? It's actually a Spalding racket. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, Spalding. Check that out. And it's a rare Spalding racket, too. It's called the Power Tech, as it says in the throat. It's 100 square inches, which is super rare from when this racket was available. It was purchased actually at the local Goodwill for $14.99 by my buddy Pete Allen. This is part of his collection. Um, why are there extra graphite here this is graphite guys like this is graphite so it's part of the unique system that they have here so it is double inversion bridge system so double bridge double bridge why do they do this um according to them the theory is when you put a bridge here and you put a bridge here, you shorten the distance between these main strings. And their theory is because of this, this is holding the strings here and this is holding the strings here. You can string it looser and get control, yet still get the power that you want and need. Does that make a whole lot of sense to you? <laughs> so what they're saying is the power is equalized through here because these don't go all the way out to the ends. That's an interesting uh, slice of tennis technology history here. And 100 square inch head were pretty rare back in this day, like I said. Um, The recommended tension on this bracket is 45 pounds to 60 pounds. 16 by 18 string pattern. Total weight with the strings in it is 345 grams. And you can feel like there's a lot of weight in this head because of the extra graphite. 
So designed in the USA, manufactured in Taiwan. So the more I pull out these rackets, the more I'm seeing that, you know, Taiwan was actually a, a pretty major manufacturing um, thing for uh, tennis rackets back in this day. It actually says recommended tension 57 pounds here. <laughs> so my buddy Pete actually strung it with like a, you know, multi-fiber, fiber-ish kind of a string from back in the day. Um, man, this is kind of exciting because I've read that this thing's pretty rare. All right, well, let's take it out, give it a try, and see what we think. All right, see you on the court. So, Spalding PowerTech 100 DIB system. What do you think DIB system means, Coach Rob? Um, I had no idea until you had to explain it to me. The uh, double inverted bridge, which is your power, where it's PowerTech here and here, which is a very strange shape. <laughs> so, tell me what you thought when you played with it, and I'll explain to you the technology, okay? Okay, I thought it was an interesting um, feel. I was trying to hit it pretty flat because I wasn't sure what was going to happen with this strange shape. Um, a couple I, I hit pretty good in the middle and they felt all right. Um, but it definitely had more of a, a strange sensation just looking at it and, and knowing that you had a condensed area of the sweet spot. So you're telling me you panicked because you thought the head was small? Uh, no, <laughs> I knew I could hit the middle. It was just a little bit more. I had to think I'm like, what is, whose idea was this? Okay. Um, so here's the idea behind the thing. Um, when you do a bridge right. over another bridge, right. you're supposed to shorten this out. Which they did. By shortening it out, it gives you more control okay. to swing out a little bit more if you can hit it here because this is now smaller so your sweet spot's smaller <laughs> right God, okay so you can string it looser to get the power you want from it because this is now shorter with the second bridge over oh yeah when you started i, I had i hadn't seen this nice red white and blue string in yeah. a long time mm -hmm. it's some like power fiber kind of a string that i don't think is made anymore these days um so I don't know if I showed you guys, but $14.99 from the thrift store. My buddy Pete Allen's, uh, from my buddy Pete Allen's collection. Uh, when you hit with this, like, I like that ball that came over. It was flatter, lower in my strike zone a little bit more. We kept the rallies going a little bit better. So now I understand what you were doing. You know, you were pretty much flattening it out a little bit, worried that you might you know, clip the bridge. Right. You know, <laughs> but I felt like because of this extra, you know, graphite that there was a lot more plow through it. So it was actually easier to hit through the ball. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought as soon as I threw it out like this, I felt this that took over and just plowed through the ball. So I felt like it made both of us hit flatter. Yeah. Well, that's hard for you. Easy. For me, but, yeah. <laughs> but no, this is cool. I actually, I've never seen a racket like this. And um, this is something I would actually consider playing with. Right. I'm wondering even if this is a spec they can use nowadays, because you don't see that. I mean, you see this, I know, on, was it some vocals that had mm -hmm. a stranger throat? Because uh, I usually had to borrow your extender. Right. Because my machine wouldn't uh, do it. But I don't know about that. That's... Yeah. You would think any ball you can miss hit up here is going to throw some strange spin at, it, at the true. opponent. This is true. But. And I wonder if 
rules don't allow for a gap anymore in between. Yeah, I mean, I know on the remember we were talking about that vocal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe the gap is so far down, oh, or that's the bridge true. is so low. Maybe that's how that's they get true. away with it. I don't know. But the, but it's a double bridge on both sides. Right. I mean, it must be complicated to make this thing too. Right. Right. Because I've never seen anything like it before. Me neither. So, guys, from what I've read and what I've researched, this is pretty rare of a racket. There aren't a lot of these out there. Um, I think Spalding, after they made this, they didn't make it again. So it's kind of a one generational type of a racket. So if you ever see something like this at a thrift store, garage sale, you know, pick it up, try it. It's actually super unique and super fun to play with. Um, it's it's heavy <laughs> and uh i mean i i liked it i liked it but i like weight i like weight yeah you like that yeah. um i i yeah. liked handing it over to you <laughs> <laughs> maybe if it was wilson you would not hand it over to me maybe not as quickly <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks for having fun with me coach Roth. of course all right guys thank you for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis